Hello lovely readers, this week I'm back with a tag video. I have been tagged by the lovely Elizabeth at the Kish North to do the reader problems tag. I forgot to write down who created this, but I will find out and put it in the link below for you so you can check their channel out as well. Um, I'm just going to dive into it because I got tagged ages ago and I should have done this ages ago, but I didn't. And we're just going to pretend like I did. So, question number one. You have 20,000 books on your TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? I'm a bit of a magpie mood reader. I have technically got a tech, like a, a organising technique, but I don't stick to it very much. So I have, I don't put books on my shelves unless they're read, because I don't have a lot of shelf space, so only things that I want to keep go on the shelves. So I have like a box of books that is my to read pile. <laughs> But as well as that, the box is next to a little tiny table, and on the table I'll do like my priority reads pile, which are books that I am particularly excited for. Um, I also have next to it a pile which is books that people have lent me, because me and my mum have a book swap going on, and we lend each other a lot of books, my boyfriend lends me a lot of books, um, that sort of thing. So I just keep them separate so that they don't like go into the box and never return to their rightful owners. Um, so if I'm, if I'm just like, I don't know what to read, I'll look at my priority list pile and I'll pick out something from there. A lot of the time I bypass my priority pile because I'm in a mood and I'm like, I really want to explore like Renaissance Florence. And then I'll just be like, I know I have a book somewhere and I'll just rummage and find it and do that instead. So like, it's all very wishy-washy. There's not really a technique, although I try to impose techniques upon myself. Um, question number two is, you're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? What I tend to do is, um, sometimes I'll pause and I'll read something else, but my fear is that by reading something else I will never pick up the original book ever again. So sometimes what I do is, because I commute, um, I make myself on my first stretch of my bus before everyone else gets on the bus and it's quite quiet. I will read the book I'm struggling with because it's easier to engage with it if it's a bit quiet. And then when the bus starts to get busier, I'll start reading something else which is much easier to read and such, find it much more engaging. And then like that way, like I'm sort of keeping on doing some of the hard one, but also like not like I understand myself and I understand when I'm not going to take in a book. So like a little balance, a try at least. Um, question number three. The end of the year is coming and you're so close but so far away in your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? Um, I think I probably would try and catch up. Um, probably, like, I don't, I don't know because the last few years I've managed to finish my Goodreads reading challenge like a lot before the year ends. Um, I would probably try and prioritise some of the smaller books but what my main focus is at the moment are on reading bigger books. So like I just want to read more pages rather than more books. But like if I really cared, I would probably just be like, here's some novellas, here's some graphic novels, and I'll just do that, I think. Question four. The covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? I don't super mind. I'm not a person who has to have matching covers on all of my series. That doesn't really bother me. Um, I tend to get attached to the copies that I have actually read. So the, sometimes I might be like, oh, I don't love this cover. Maybe I should buy a prettier cover. But then I'm like, but this is the one that I read and I had all of the emotions when I read this specific issue. Like issue, that's because <laughs> I work in magazines. Um, this specific edition. So now like I just, I get really attached to the, what is the physical one that I actually had the emotional journey with. So I'm not likely to change it out because then I'm like, this is an unpersonalized. It's beautiful, but it's not personal. And like, I get emotionally attached to them even if I think that they're objectively a bit ugly so I probably just keep it to be honest. Um, question number five. Everyone and their mother loves a book you don't really like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like maybe Miriam between lines and life? I all, I'm not sure. It really depends on like what is the book and what is the genre I feel. Um, I've got a couple of people like, um, like for example, I might vent with um, someone who I work, my friend who I work with, we have occasionally vented about books that everyone seems to love, but we're just like, I don't get it. So probably actually my friend Anna, I would say, but they're not a booktuber, so. Um, question number six, 
you're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public, how do you deal? Um, this has been me multiple times because I do most of my reading on the bus and um, I once Oh god, I've had so many times where I've been like on a long train journey I've accidentally packed a book that I didn't realise would be severely emotional and I'm like on a train, slightly hungover and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Sometimes I cry and I try and like not let anyone see that I'm crying but I'm like, I can't help but cry. Sometimes I like close the book for a moment and I like take deep breaths and I'm like, you've got this, hold it together. Um, so it kind of really depends. I'm getting better at not openly weeping. But I, it does usually mean I have to just stop reading for a bit and just be like, you can do this. Uh, question number seven. A sequel of a book you love just came out but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodreads, cry in frustration? Again, kind of depends on the book. If I own it, I will likely reread the sequel. If I don't have it, I might try and Wikipedia the original one and remind myself of what happened and if I if there isn't a plot summary available then I probably will just dive in and hope for the best and hope that I remember who all these people are because for example I own um Clariel and Golden Hand by Garth Nix but I still haven't read them because I keep telling myself I'm going to do a whole series reread I'm going to reread the original trilogy before I dive in so that I remember everything but what's actually happened is it just means that I just haven't read any of them because <laughs> I just keep forgetting that I'm going to reread it because instead I just think about all the new books I have to read so like maybe that's something I need to work on as a human being. Question number eight. You do not want anyone, anyone, borrowing your books. How do you politely tell people nope when they ask? Okay, generally, I'm happy to lend books out. There are a few people who I don't lend books to anymore based on previous experiences. For example, my friend's aunt still has my copy of Game of Thrones and I lent it to them about... Ooh, like seven years ago and I'm never getting that book back and I've accepted that. So, like, there are some people who I might just be like, Sorry, I don't, I don't know, but like they don't ask me much anymore. To be honest, I don't really know what I would say. I'd probably just forget. <laughs> I'm sometimes a bit forgetful, so like I might, there's probably people who I've offered to lend books to and I've actually just forgotten to ever lend them the book. I think I don't mind people lending people books as long as I keep track of who has what book and then I can ask them for it back. Again, I lent my I lent my friend, my absolute best friend of the world, I lent her um, Shadow of the Wind two years ago now, and I don't know if I'm ever getting that back. And like, hmm, essentially what we're finding out here is that I don't really know how to handle this and I keep lending people books and not getting them back, so maybe I need to be firmer. Question number nine. You've picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? I would probably try and read something by an author that I know I love um, and if I don't have any new books by an author like that I might do a reread of something fabulous just to like really remind me of why I like reading <laughs> but generally I don't have that problem because of commuting and I have nothing else to do on my commute so I just read so that kind of like necessity forces me to not really have so many reading <laughs> Uh, question 10. There are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? I'm a bit rubbish at remembering to buy new releases because I do a lot of like secondhand shopping. So I go to a lot of charity shops and like, I use the library quite a lot. If actually, might not actually buy them, might get them from the library. It depends. If it's something I'm really dying to get, I will absolutely go buy it. There are lots of things that I get really excited about that I never actually end up picking up and that I might stumble upon in a charity shop like two years later and then I'm like, oh god, I wanted that book and then I buy it. So again, probably not that many, but like, enough? <laughs> Question 11. As you've bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? It varies wildly. Like, some of them are like immediately prioritise and read. Some of them will sit there for literally years. I love having lots of books on my TBR pile. That doesn't stress me out. That fills me full of joy. Sometimes books sit in there for like seven years before I read them, but that's just because I know that I want to read them and I know that there will be a moment which is the perfect moment for me to read them and I would rather hold on to them for a longer time and read them at a moment that really works than force myself to read them quickly 
when I'm not feeling them. So like, it's very, it really wildly depends. <laughs> what we're getting from this is that I'm a complete mood reader, I'm a bit wishy-washy, and I just sort of read what I want when I want, and that's about it. Um, okay, I forgot to think ahead of who I'm going to tag. I'm going to tag, and you might have already done this, so don't worry about it if you have. I'm going to tag a journey through books. I'm going to tag made with books. And I'm going to tag Charlie at Charles Heathcote. And I'm going to leave it there because that's three and that's enough. I hope you're having a really lovely day. I will see you next week for something different.